Hello, good morning. Happy New Week. Child of God, did you know that with God all things are possible? I'm sure you've heard that before. But to come to know it is to come to accept it in your heart and believe and behave as if you really believe it. Many of us don't, and that's why things are the way they are. I want to assure you this week that if you really try to behave like you know, like you know, like you know, that with God all things are possible, things will begin to change in your life and impossibilities will become possible. In our gospel reading of this morning, which is taken from Matthew chapter 12, from verses 38 to 42, the people come to Jesus and ask him, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. In other words, do a miracle so that we know that you have power, so that we know that you can change things that are impossible. And Jesus says to them, it is only an unfaithful generation that seeks a sign that goes after miracles. You should already know by now what God is capable of doing. The only sign that will be given to this generation is the sign of Jonah. Now, what's the sign of Jonah? Remember, in the Old Testament, Jonah was this man who was swallowed up by the fish and when you're swallowed up by the fish in the Bible, it's a metaphor for saying that you were in an impossible situation. The only logical conclusion, the only um, logical uh, outcome of that was that you were going to be digested by the fish. That was your end. But God made the fish to spit out Jonah. So what God is saying in effect is that whatever it is that is holding you down, that you think is your end, that you think is the conclusion of your situation, God is saying that he will make that situation speak you out and you will be free again. So that's basically what Jesus is saying, that you should have looked at the situation of Jonah in the past, in the Bible, to know that God is still able to do wonderful things today. He's still able to do the impossible today by his power and by his wisdom. Now, talking about his wisdom, Jesus also says that the queen of Sheba heard about the wisdom of Solomon and came all the way to Jerusalem to listen to the wisdom of Solomon. And yet, there is something greater than Solomon here. So what we need to realize is that by his power, by the power of his word and his wisdom, God is able to do things that are seen to be impossible by men. He did it for Jonah and he will do it for you. In our first reading this morning, we find the people of God fleeing slavery. They were living in a situation that seemed to be their dead end. I mean, in those days, if a powerful power such as the Egyptians, kept you in captivity, that was your end. But again, God helps them to get out of slavery. So we read this morning from Exodus chapter 14, from verses 5 to 18, that the people of God left slavery, and this was reported to Pharaoh, who changed his mind about letting them go, and then decided to run after them. Child of God, I'd like to show you a few things in this text that might be useful to you today and maybe for the rest of the week. The first thing I'd like to show to you is that they fled. They fled. We must be determined to flee those places and things that are determined to keep us down. Those chains of addiction, those chains of sin, those chains, whatever chain it is, that is holding you down. Don't just try to leave the place. You must flee from the place. There's a difference between living and fleeing. So what the Israelites are teaching us this morning is that we must learn to flee. We must learn to run away. The second thing I'd like to show to you is that once they run away, there were two things that happened. The first is that the enemy chased after them. The Egyptians chased after them and tried to get them back. Don't think that just because you have um, run away from that evil, from that addiction, that it is not going to try to come back and catch you. Child of God, you need to keep running. You must keep going. And second thing I'd like to show to you here is that at some point, the, Egyptian, the Israelites got tired and began to complain and told Moses, were there no graves in Egypt where we could have been buried? We could have just died there. Why did you bring us out in the desert to die? Child of God, as you try to run away from the things of your past, from time to time, there will be a temptation to go back to where you are coming from. There will be a temptation that you become a dog that goes back to its vomit. So what the Bible says, as Moses told the people today, is fear not, stand your ground. When those temptations come crashing in into your mind, telling you, no, you were better before, go back to that way of life, tell yourself, do not be afraid, God is on my side, stand your ground. And the final thing I'd like to say to you this morning is that if you stand your ground, God will come through for you. It might look impossible to you, but it is not impossible to God. For with God, all things are possible. And Almighty God bless and keep you this week, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.